Hey guys, I'm Tom from Ignite. Today we're gonna to be discussing Jonathan Swift's 1726 novel, Gulliver's Travels. Particularly, we're gonna be talking about the key themes that is like critical for your analysis. Um, we're gonna be discussing those, the way that they sort of reflected in, in various scenes and progressions uh, of this text. Make sure that if you like this content, that you subscribe to the Ignite feed and you click on the bell for notifications so you can get all of our great content. So let's get into it here. Basically, I've tried to find like a key idea that sums up the two key themes that I wanna be talking about. So alienation and governance, I think, is the idea. Essentially, what you should understand about Gulliver's Travels, it is a satire of different ways in which society is structured. So we go through um, these kind of varying worlds um, that he takes us to, and we sort of understand different aspects of society and hierarchy in each of them. So as much as they're reflecting on um, sort of society and governance and like a ruling class, they also reflect back on a sort of an alienation and the reflection on like human nature. So I think that's sort of why I've broken into this sort of dual theme there because it's both about sort of the way that we structure society, but ultimately the satire is sort of reflected and comes back to the individual as well. I think that's particularly helpful thinking about reimagined worlds as well. So talking about corruption and the ruling class, guys, I think firstly we can talk about this in the context of the module you're studying with Swift and Gulliver, which is this idea of reimagined worlds. And so obviously it's quite clear to see the uh, understanding. It's not uh, of, of how this sort of aligns with the module and the text in the way that it's not simply taking one world, uh, sort of taking a different idea and reimagining it, but it's, it's replicated a number of times. So we see this series of reimagined worlds that kind of juxtapose against each other. So the first two worlds we see, uh, one in which Gulliver is sort of is uh, incredibly small in relation to the other people there, and one the sort of the first world we see in which he's incredibly large. He encounters this sort of race of incredibly small people. I think that's obviously the first juxtaposition that we can start with that comes back to this key theme of the corruption of the ruling class. We see the way that he's treated and and uh, sort of ultimately revered and kind of becomes this figure of revulsion in this societies um, kind of reflects the way that you sort of see this essentially inequality, right? So something that Swift repeatedly does for his satire is he literalizes these kind of intangible differences. So obviously in society, you would say that some people are bigger and smaller in the sense of perhaps economic, in terms of like wealth inequality, or just in terms of social status. Uh, and I think that's obviously what Swift is getting at in these first two there. And the idea, of particularly of how Gulliver's temperament changes when he's speaking with people that are kind of considerably smaller than him or also considerably larger, the way that he um, undergoes these sort of vicissitudes of authority, I think is really important to understand and to analyze in your text there. Particularly as an aspect of this satire, I think sort of easiest to discuss in terms of this corruption as well is Swift's comment on kind of misanthropy. So like his his disposition towards other people and what he thinks about human nature as a whole. I think we'll sort of discuss this with the next theme when we're talking more about these kind of ideas of governance and colonialism, but the way that sort of Swift returns to this idea of the sort of fundamental degeneracy of uh, humankind. I think that's sort of an important theme to return to and to touch on how it repeatedly in all these different political societies, even in the sort of the, the one that Gulliver ends up idealizing at the end and when he returns to society is sort of discussing speaking with like horses and even though he sees the uh, repression of the yahoos in that final society I think it's important to understand kind of the, the way that that corruption is implicit but it's still relevant for all of us to pick up upon and so I think corruption of the ruling class is sort of the first theme that that intersects uh, all of those societies and you can kind of use those to juxtapose and compare against each other. As I stated, the second thing I want to talk about is about governance and corruption. So firstly, this links to uh, a lot of the discussion. We had another video on the feed for Gulliver's Travels where we talk purely about the context that surrounds this novel. I think particularly the idea of political and economic revolution that informs the sort of revolutionary air, um, this kind of ambient cultural, cultural and political frequency that uh, Swift is clearly picking up upon. So firstly, obviously the French Revolution, also the Glorious Revolution, which would have been more relevant to, to Swift in the Kingdom of Britain, but understanding particularly the way that rejecting these previous forms of feudal and monarchical structures of society, I think that's really important for us to pick up upon as like a key theme 
clearly the object of Swiss satire in a lot of ways. That's why he, he keeps returning. In each of these societies we visit, we notice the way that he sort of begins by uh, discussing with like the average people, as I would say, sort of the proletariat in these societies. But he invariably gravitates towards the ruling class and understanding the way that this sort of uh, this different forms of governance uh, compare and contrast with one another. Um, and particularly, as I said before, refract back through into our understanding of, of individual nature. And I think that relates to this idea of colonialism in kind of a broader socio-political way. Um, and this notion of uh, cultural triumph, this idea of uh, associating a personal or individual uh, sentiment with this kind of like broader idea of power hierarchies and sort of identifying with this sort of ruling class and the intelligentsia that obviously Gulliver sort of gravitates towards at the end of the text. So I think that's another critical theme to understand in terms of Gulliver's travels is how this idea of colonialism and sort of superiority uh, kind of uh, sort of explored and satirized and then contrasted against the sort of alienation and corruption we discussed earlier and the sort of inherent degeneracy of human society and sort of this uh, balancing act that we see between yeah, the, the degeneracy of this sort of uh, average class and sort of the hu human nature and the, the nature of the beings that Gulliver comes across. But then also this broader degeneracy that's manifested in terms of political structures. That's why we see this air of revolution in a lot of societies or this kind of moved like against these sort of colonial or imperialist ideologies. So I think that balance is really at the core of Gulliver's travels. And those are the themes that you guys uh, should be touching upon and analyzing in all of your essays. So thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure if you like this video, you subscribe to the Ignite feed. Uh, but good luck with your, your essays and your work in Gulliver's Travels. And thanks for watching. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.